I'll just do a bit of review while people filter in here. So I'm going to be speaking to Dave and Cindy most because you weren't here last weekend. I think everybody else was. Let's go right back to the beginning and, and I'm going to be pointing right at you here. As far as how a queen is made, the egg, the same as a worker egg. When it hatches, then it's fed royal jelly. Royal jelly and worker jelly are a different compound. They're similar, but they're not the same. Uh, and a queen egg then is fed royal jelly for the entirety of its development, uh, as opposed to a worker egg is fed worker jelly for three days and then bee bread until capped on day nine. <coughs> so those things change that gene expression and change that into a queen bee. So of course we, we had our timeline when the egg is laid, when it hatches, when it's capped, when it emerges. Uh, so we're, we're looking at day nine for capping, day 16 for the emergence. And those are really the dates other than the, the egg hatch and 36 hour after hatch is what we're looking at to notch. And then capping and emergence are our next two uh, big days there. So we're trying to, we're trying to let the bees do what they want to do anyway, but just give them more reason to do it and to do it on our timeline and do it on our schedule and kind of within what we need. Uh, swarm cells, I started out <coughs> my long career two years ago, uh, capturing swarm cells, putting them in nukes, and they would mate more often than not, and they would turn into colonies. I've made a couple dozen colonies like that. So that's really very similar to what we're doing. <coughs> in my opinion, swarm cells are in, in, in one very important way the best queen because that's the only egg that was laid as a queen. Every other time they make a queen, the egg was laid as a worker. Whether it be a supersedure situation or an emergency situation, that egg was laid in a worker cell. The queen destined that egg to be a worker and then the, the bees changed that path at some point in that development into a queen. But a swarm, she lays in that, that cup that you see, you see those little cups in your, in your hive, she'll lay in that cup and then from the instant that egg hatches, they're feeding that royal jelly, not worker jelly, they're feeding it royal jelly from that instant on. So that, from that perspective, that's the best queen uh, as far as how it was raised. People argue swarm queen, oh, you shouldn't use swarm queen because, you know, then they have the swarm impulse. Well, <coughs> all bees have a swarm impulse. Uh, I don't think there's anything to that. I've, I've read quite a bit on that and I think it's just kind of one of those things some people think. Um, personally, I don't think there's anything to it, and if there is, there's nothing to worry about in there. There were books written back in the 1800s, and this guy in Michigan picked up on this, Mel Disselcone, a couple decades ago, and he, did, he discovered that, that what these people were doing back in the 1800s, they knew that it worked, but they didn't really know why it worked. Uh, and he kind of was the guy who figured out the why. And the why is as simple as the fact that that cell is not a horizontal cell, but it's a vertical cell. If there's an egg or a larva in a vertical cell, that changes the mind of the bees and they feed that as a queen, they draw it as a queen, and they raise a queen. Mal took that one step further. Uh, I'll back up a bit. I've seen some, uh, some educators online uh, do different things that, and they'll, they'll actually cut out a, a strip of, of larva out of a frame and you know if you're using wax foundation or even foundationless it's far easier than trying to saw through a piece of plastic foundation. They'll cut out a strip and they'll actually take that strip put it in a grafting frame turn the cells so that they hang down they'll just zip tie that so that there's little pockets of, of comb hanging there and that's grafting. They haven't touched the larva, they haven't bothered, they haven't taken the risk of, you know, flipping the thing over and smothering it. And they make queens. And why do they make queens? Because those are vertical cells. And that's the only reason. So your challenge <coughs> is not only to start that recognition of a vertical cell, and we do that by notching. And all we do is take our hive tool and we basically bust out the bottom of that horizontal cell. So now it's, it's I mean, it's missing the side still, but it's also missing the bottom. And the bees see that and they say, hey, missing the bottom, that must be a queen. So they feed it accordingly and they'll draw that cell out. It's important to actually pull that, that comb down. 
I'm actively taking part in a forum where people are sharing their results and whatnot. And just this morning, we were dealing with a situation where <coughs> one of the guys wasn't notching very far down. And well, it turns out that he was having less than good success. And the consensus was that he wasn't actually pulling that far enough down and giving them physical room to build that peanut cell down. Because, <coughs> you know, you've got a piece of foundation where that cell is and you're trying to make them make a vertical cell. So it's, it's got to, you know, come out somehow. It's, it's a little bit of a compromise there. But they will do it and they'll be successful doing that. Uh, so dragging that down a bit. Then what we need to take care of is we need to make sure they're fed properly. And to feed them properly, we need lots of nurse bees. The, a, a nurse bee feeds a larva t thousands of times a day. And so you need a lot of them. You could have thousands of larvae in your hive, so you need to f make sure they're fed well. You need to give them something to feed, so you need to give them pollen. Pollen is baby food. The adult bees make royal jelly and worker jelly out of pollen. Bee bread. Pollen and honey makes bee bread. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but the fact is we need feed, so we need honey. Sugar syrup will work. Um, we need pollen and we need lots of nurse bees. So that's what we're trying to give them as resources in the, in the cell builder. And you'll hear that term cell builder in the grafting world. And that's what we're making. But we're making cell builders for maybe half a dozen cells instead of 40 or 50 or 60, whereas a, a commercial producer might do that. And then the other thing we need to do, you know what? I'm not gonna say you need to do. Uh, it's beneficial to do is to give the bees a kick in the pants. They need a reason, right? Any, anything needs a reason. Anything with a reason is, is going to do whatever. So we give them two reasons. At this time of year, we can capitalize the, on the swarm impulse, and the swarm impulse includes making queens. So we want to capture that and say, okay, you guys want to start thinking about swarming and leaving? <clears throat> Make some queens, but do it my way and do it on my schedule. And also, we're going to give them an emergency impulse to say we have no queen. Almost every cell builder, there are some exceptions, but almost every cell builder that beekeepers use will uh, be a queenless cell builder. So that means there's no young larvae in there <coughs> that the bees can make queens out of, so they have to work on my queens. There may not be any larva in that hive, that big, huge, powerful cell builder. There might not be any larva in that hive to feed. So they're only going to feed my queens, which is great. We're not going that far, but we are going the queenless route. Remove the old queen, make that cell builder queenless so that they've got that impulse, they've got the swarm impulse, they've got the resources they need, and now we're going to give them a little bit of timing. We're going to make those notches and start the clock. So that's what we did on day one last weekend. <clears throat> so they've pretty much been left alone. I did check everything and I, I was pleased with what I saw. One of the things we didn't do was, uh, well, a couple things we didn't do. Uh, I didn't instruct you to look for existing cells and cups. <clears throat> so when you're doing your notching, you should go through your whole cell builder, your whole hive uh, that's now queenless, and destroy any cups and probably destroy any cells that are already begun. You could take that cell and do something else with it, but I'm not going to concentrate on that because we're, we're talking about our own timing here. Um, so to take advantage of your own timing, then get rid of anything else they've already got going on. So take that cell away, take that cup away, make sure everything's nice and clean. <coughs> because if you, if, you have your, if you have your cells developing in your cell builder and they've been working on a cell for days beforehand, that cell is going to emerge first and guess what she's going to do? She's going to go through that hive and destroy every cell in it. And that's all your cells. So you don't want that to happen. You'll, you'll, you'll notice that as soon as you go and check you on day seven, you'll go, uh-oh, somebody's destroyed all my cells. Yeah, here. and you can tell because they, did, they tear the side down, you'll see that cell and the side will be all ripped apart. Yeah. <clears throat> there's different, there's different uh, keys with the cell to tell what's going on. Um, just a little bit on that, you can tell the age of the cell when it's going to emerge by looking at the end of the cell because 
uh, near emergence, the bees will start to chew away the wax that's on the end of the, the cell. So the peanut that you see in there will have a more of a rusty colored end on it. And that's going to emerge ASAP today or tomorrow. Um, when a queen emerges, she chews the end of that out and it'll open like a little trap door and hang there like a can opener can. Uh, it's really distinctive. So if you see that little can opener lid hanging there, that queen emerged on her own. You know, if you see the thing torn down from the side, she was killed by a virgin. So just different ways to kind of put the puzzle together as to what you're seeing if you're seeing these things in a hive. So <clears throat> again, another thing we didn't do is we didn't mark where our notches were. A couple of benefits to that is now you can go back in a few days and, and see if the bees repaired your notch, which they often do, or if they actually build the cells that you wanted them to build. If they repaired your notch, a couple of reasons you, you may not have done the notch correctly, like I was saying earlier, might not have kind of opened that up and drag it down far enough. They can easily repair that and it's astounding how fast they do. They'll repair that in a day. It's, it's something in the... And the other reason is that the larva in there, in those cells that you notched, wasn't the right age. And they won't use larva that's too old. They just won't. They'll use larva that's as old as possible sometimes, but not too old. Because if it's too old, they can't make a queen out of it. Uh, Jay, you notched eggs. Yep. And they built peanuts out of that? Peanuts out of Okay. So that's good because no, we, can't go too we had that question. Yeah. yeah. I specifically marked which <coughs> Specifically, okay, 36 hour larvae and specifically eggs, I was going where they're still raised up, they feel. Yeah. And they still drew peanuts off of those eggs. Good, good. So. Uh, I would imagine those eggs were, because an egg, an egg hatches on day three. So if you, if you notched an egg that she had laid that day, you may or may not have success. It's probably, that egg probably hatched pretty fast. Yeah. You know, within eight hours of you making that notch perhaps. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of guessing. Yeah, the only the, uh, the egg one, only one out of probably the five or six eggs that I notched there, they only drew one peanut off of there. Yeah. But I mean, whatever, I don't care. And I that's the beauty. You, get, you take your hive tool and, and again on this forum we've talked about people uh, saying, well I don't want to you know, make such a great big notch and they start making small notches and the success rate goes way down because the, the beauty of that wide notch is the fact that you have that that range of ages that we talked about last week. You have that pattern of old to young as you go out radiating from the center. So your hive tool kind of gives you a margin for error. You can say, well, I know this larva is visibly too old, so let's start next cell over, notch that and go younger as we go out. And you may even run into eggs. So you're pretty much guaranteed to be in the right age in that notch somewhere and often you'll get more than one cell. You could get a couple. Sometimes I've seen pictures of people having three on one notch. Uh, so again, right to the foundation, pull that down a, a, good, a good bit. We learned last week, um, one of the things I see, the pictures of and videos of Mel notching, he sets his frame up, holds it by the top, sets it up on the hive, and, and notches like this with his hive tool. And we kind of learned last week we were, we were doing it more flat and we, we mushed a cell that had larvae in it so it was pretty juicy and that promptly ran right into our notch and so that's kind of not what you want because that'll, that'll drown the larvae and kill them. So I, I guess a little more of a vertical, you know, at least, at least angled like that is one of the, the details that we didn't cover yeah, last week. I think I've covered the deficiencies from last uh, weekend that, you know, we didn't mark where our notches were. Um, again, the, the reasons for that, of course, should should be obvious, but you, when, when that peanut is drawn, it's going to stick out from the comb. So you go into that hive today, you start yanking frames. If you've got a mark on there, you kind of know where, you know, danger zone. Don't be, don't be yanking frames right beside your peanut, because you could rip it off and just destroy all your work. Don't shake queens. Don't shake. Yeah. This is, this, is a, this is the day when you want to be careful. Uh, and I've kind of struggled with this. I've set up my mating nukes here, these three blue pallets. 
So we'll be making nukes. We made two yesterday here on this front corner. <coughs> and ideally, I think I'd like to make my mating yard out here by the trees. Uh, a little bit of shelter for the queens um, away from my apiary because virgin queens can be a little bit dangerous to your apiary because they're they're a little bit like drones in that they're they're promiscuous between hives so you can have virgin queens come into your productive hives and off your queen that happens so having my mating nukes here a little bit of a risk because they're coming out of those hives they go to mate they come back maybe they're going to miss cue smell another hive that they like you know, and uh, and go and have problems. So I've never made it that many. I, I have this stand here and I have one in that apiary too. That's my old apiary. And I've, I've filled that stand before and that's as many as I've ever made it at one time. So I think of the level that I'm, that I'm working at, the number of queens I'm mating at one time, the risk is pretty moderate. Uh, from that danger, but if you're running a big operation and you're you're mating hundreds of of queens, you you don't want to do it here, you know, because that's big big danger to your apiary. Move them away, even that far away for for hundreds would not be enough. But for most people, uh, you know, if if your operation isn't as big, then the danger is very small. If you're mating one or two, your danger is very small. So don't don't think that, well, I'm a hobbyist, I have one hive or two hives. I don't have 20 acres that I can move my mating. That's okay, don't worry about that. Um, you can work with positioning of the entrance. You can work with other cues, shapes and colors of boxes and whatnot. All of my boxes are dipped. They all look the same. I like that. My queens don't. Um, I, I don't care that they all look the same to be honest. I do like a bit of color, but it's a it makes the boxes last a long time and it's cheap to uh, to dip. There's not as much theory today. We're gonna get get to work. Okay, anybody curious what we're gonna find? Anybody? Anybody? Hands? Yeah? I love this part actually. Okay, so last week we actually talked about the nukes we made with the with the old queen. Um, same thing today. We're going to be making nukes. Your resources are right there, um, and there's, they're separated. So there's first one is pollen, second one is drawn comb, third one is feed. They're not going to be pure, of course. Often you'll pull a pollen frame and it'll have everything on it, so that's awesome. But one thing you really want to make sure of is that you have a frame in there that's a pretty good candidate to lay in because when she emerges and when she mates you want her to have lots of space to go to town because she's gonna she's gonna really start laying fast so one of the hardest parts intellectually to get over here is when we pull our notched frames, we may have three or four or five or more cells on a frame. And the way we're doing this, we're using plastic foundation. So although you can <laughs> cut chunks out of it, you're not going to want to do that. And if you're using foundationless or, or wax foundation, you can maybe cut cells and move them around and whatnot. You can experiment with that. But for now, we're going to call a cell and a frame as one unit. So what you don't want to do is stick a frame that has more than two cells on it in your mating nuke because there is going to be a battle royale in there and somebody's going to get hurt and everybody but one is going to get killed so you don't want your surviving queen to be injured in any way you want her to be a good queen so we'll leave we'll look at the two biggest cells that's really all you have to go on at this point and we'll put the two biggest cells in the mating nuke and we'll pinch off the rest. We'll get rid of them. Sometimes they're really close together too, so it's, that's kind of difficult. Pretty much if you 
if you damage that cell in some way, you know, scrape the side out of it or something, that'll end that queen. And here's where what I'm going to teach you is definitely not the only way because what you're going to do at this point depends greatly on your goals. Do you want to increase? Do you want to split up your mother hive as much as possible and spread it out? Do you want to put that mother hive back together for production, say for a honey flow? Uh, do you want to sell nukes? So you have to decide what you want to do. What we can do with the cells is make nukes and set them off for mating and then we can wait the timeline I've got here on a page. As far as what happens with the mother colony, again you can decide. You can move that mother, the, the original old queen back into that colony with a little bit of special manipulation. You, you don't want to probably just dump her back in there, there might be a fight. Uh, you can leave one of your cells in that original colony and she'll mate right out of there. Uh, you could break up that colony's resources, brood and whatnot, to strengthen some of your other colonies perhaps. I've got lots of opportunity for that in my apiary. I've got a lot of colonies that could use some help so I can do some of that. It's kind of a shame to lose what was my best colony, but I'm not really using it. I'm not really losing it. She's still in there. She's still in that nuke. She's still laying the same as she was. And in another week or so, she'll probably have filled most of that. And I can move that nuke back to a 10 frame box. And I've not lost very much. I won't have lost anything because I'll now have my new queens laying. More queens, more eggs, more eggs, and more babies. More babies, more honey. Changing out queens, do you have any program for that, or do you recommend that, or do you think about annually changing out? Uh, I'm only three years in. Yeah, Some of my original queens something? are still here. Like I'm, I'm I have, to figure out a bike I have pondered that, and I've talked to Ian about that. And, uh, you know, everybody will have their own way of doing things. <clears throat> Ian's response to me was, I used to chase that schedule but I don't do that anymore. Um, he said, I just deal with them as is. You know, whatever happens, happens. If they're not producing, then he'll, he'll divide them up. If they're, if they're dead out, then he'll divide them up. If, you know, sometimes they'll die during the summer, during the honey flow. So in the fall, then, you know, shake them out. You can't, you can't add a queen to a hive that late in the year. They don't like that, but. So I think you have to kind of come up with whatever works for you. You can mark all your queens with your colors. I want to start doing that because now I'm going to be doing more of my own queens. So I want to start marking them with the colors so I can see the ages. Um, to me, replacement is not going to be dependent on the age, particularly on the age alone. I, I don't think I'd ever do that because you can have a one-year-old queen who's no good at all. And you could have a three-year-old who's really going to town. So age is just sort of, you know, if you look at a queen and she's running out of steam, she's starting to pocket a drone here and there in, in the worker cells, and you can say, well, she's running out of sperm. So basically experience will drive them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then if you look at that queen who's starting to lay a drone or two and you look at the color and you say, well, the old girl's three years old, right? But I'm going to... I'm going to skip ahead a bit, and exactly, so you can see, if she's a year old and she's starting to do that, then you maybe use that as a criteria and say, I'm not going to notch this one. It's not a good candidate. She's three years old and she's still going, that's my breeder. I'm going to notch that all I can. I've seen a one year old, I've got a queen and she's just a lazy ass queen. Yes. Some of them are. i got an apiary full of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you get this other and you buy some new one and the thing explodes. Yeah. Yeah. We still hold this idea of queen high, and I think we need to get over that. I think so too. Because that can do nothing but harm us and our colonies. She's the mechanism of the hive. Yeah. Playing. She's the biggest servant and the, big, the, 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 the most valuable the tool that, there, that and she's nothing but a tool. Uh, that whole queen idea, they used to call her the king before she realized she wasn't male. Um, 
I'm going to skip ahead here a bit on the last page. Page I have some additional reading, and John Swartz is kind of one of the modern gurus of this. He's been doing this for many years. Uh, I can't remember how many. Well, f uh, 12 years, 12, 14 years. I think he's been doing this. And there's more to this OTS idea than what we've covered here. We're covering swarm mitigation is all we're doing, but. Uh, he hasn't had, there hasn't been re any really good videos on this until uh, recently John did a presentation and they videotaped it. The video's not that great of quality but it's there and you can tell what's going on. And uh, you know, he, he talks at length about that exact thing, our attitude toward the Queen. He's, he's a very soft-spoken guy and he's a very mild-mannered, I, I talk to him a lot privately, very helpful, just a really great guy, I really like him. But when it comes to holding his queens in a lofty position, he is ruthless. He says he has so many queens, they are worth almost nothing in his apiary. Because he can make queens like that, and lots, and fast, and easy, and... These guys, when, when, these, when these guys take part in this whole program, and I can talk more about the, the, the summer part later, but to give you an idea of how confident they are and how successful they are in this program. Uh, and the size of these operations are 50, 60 colonies-ish. They will pinch every queen in their apiary the 1st of May. We're about two or three weeks behind that because they're Michigan and, and Ohio. 21st of June, they pinch every queen again. Their queens are never a year old. Some of their, half their queens are never two months old. So uh, we can go into the whole kind of why and, and why they're doing that and, and why it's successful and whatnot. Uh, that's great. But, but that illustration is just to, to show you the guys have been doing this. And this is what really spoke to me. I'm, I'm looking at these guys and, and, and reading about what they're doing. And I think to myself, these people are either genius or crazy. Because there's a fine line, right? Between genius and crazy. Uh, but it works, and they've been doing this for years and years, and they have nothing but success doing this. I can't speak from experience. I was talking to John about this last weekend, and <laughs> he just he just said, "Boy, you better have some some real world stuff before you get that big ostrich egg on your face." By <laughs> you know, so that's all I can say about that. If you do the reading that I've I've put on the back here, and and look at what some of these guys are doing. The caveat to all of this is we are in a little bit of a different climate zone. So the timing may or may not be just right for us. But I don't think it would be a big problem. Because their goal, really, in May when they're doing this, they're just getting by. They're mitigating swarming without buying queens. They're not making their best queens. They're, they're just, it's just kind of a maintenance thing. They're, the big deal is at the end of June, they pinch all those queens, they go into honey flow with no open brood to feed, they get 100 pounds more honey on a colony because they're not feeding any babies, their queens mate in July, and the old fathers 150 years ago had a rule that a queen mated after solstice was the best queen. And these queens are mating in July, they're laying like a spring queen all the way into late fall, their clusters build great for winter. They're young, they're healthy, they winter well, and they come out in the spring, and guess what you've got now? You've got a queen that's not even a year old coming out of winter into your spring. So, to me, I think there's a lot to that. And you haven't bought a queen. You haven't bought a nuke, you haven't bought a package, nothing. I'd like to do another one of these if anybody's interested, late June, and we'll come out here and pick a subset of hives and we'll probably move the queens out into nukes again instead of instead of pinching them just because <laughs> I want that experience before I go all in right you can see I don't I can't afford the resources this year I've had two big commercial beekeepers contact me this week about OTS and say give me more information I think I can use this and these guys are running between 1500 and 2500 hives and I, I don't want to tell them it you know I thank them for the interest and I say, you know what, 
I would really like to see if you can work this somehow because I don't know where this scales to. If you can scale this to any size, I think it would be a total game changer, really. And not only for the, um, the freshness of your queens, <coughs> but if you're running your colonies in peak season without any brood, the mite control aspect of that exactly. is amazing because you've got no mites in any cells. You've got no brood. So doing a quick oxalic acid treatment uh, can just set you up really peachy for fall. Yeah, yeah. And and that's another mite control Mel Disicone uses. Uh, he makes his living selling bees, not honey. So he's not maximizing his honey uh, harvest. But what he is doing is he uses this brood break as his only mite control. He doesn't use anything but this. And I don't want anybody to jump into this all in. You still need to test. You still need to get those mites down by whatever means you need to do it. If you need to use synthetic acaricides, please do it. Use formic acid, use oxalic acid, use whatever you need to use. Use your drone trapping, use your IPM boards. <clears throat> but the theory that Mel describes is he's, he says that at that period when there's no brood but you've got you know 21 to 30 days of no laying so all of your cat brood is going to emerge before you really get a lot of new brood and the theory is that the first larvae are sacrificed the first larva the first eggs laid when they, they they hatch and then they what seven eight I think is when the mites hide in there just before capping there's so many mites and so few brood so few day seven eight larvae that they they overwhelm the larva and they starve because they cap the cell and that Mel says you can have 10 or 15 mites in a cell and they're dead because they starve so that larva is dead of course but that's a few hundred larvae sacrificed for the for the greater good. I'm not preaching this from experience. I'm just relating what these guys are doing. Um, I am going to be trying this out though to see see where this goes. The the honey production thing speaks to me, of course, because that's where I make my living. Um, but you know, producing bees, and I've not been. I I had a probably three hour better conversation with a, a one of the probably top five large beekeepers in Manitoba last night. Great guy. But one of those things I, I questioned uh, that John kind of alluded to was was these these old queens. People are saying, oh the queens they used to last five five or six years and now they only last three. Well if this program works, why are they lasting three? Why are you using two-year-old queens? If well, why do you want two-year-old queens? It's it's been said to me by experienced beekeepers that a queen's best year is her second is is the summer after she's made it. So why do you want a three-year-old queen? You're you're dealing with old queens. Just that kind of uh, out of the box kind of a question might start to make a, a, a change. If these guys can figure out a way to make something like this fly in a larger apiary, it might really help people. I hear big beekeepers all the time. Big losses, crappy queens. So again, I said I wasn't going to talk too much, so I'm going to stop talking. We're going to dig in here. Um, we're going to be making those nukes a lot like last week with the caveats that we don't have to find queens and we don't want to shake cells. We'll take the frame, cell and all, we'll, we'll cull all but the best two. I don't think we have a lot of frames that have more than, more than two. Uh, we might have some with three. And we're going to be making more nukes exactly the same, with the same kind of resources. Uh, I want to show you a couple of little management manipulation techniques to help protect that cell and I can't stress enough don't shake that cell don't drop it into that box walk it over slide it in nice and careful <clears throat> you can take it over you don't need to outfit your box first 
you can take that frame over to the box slide it right at, down in the center and then I've marked the frames where the cells are uh, I haven't necessarily marked what side the cells are on I was using a big fat crayon which I couldn't really uh, so what you do is put that frame down in there get your drawn comb frame slide it in away from it and then sandwich that cell nicely between the two frames now you've protected that cell now you can go slide your pollen frames and your feed frames and stuff into there so we'll be doing that and then there's quite a few of them to do so we'll get to work is there any questions before we do we're kind of the experimental group eh yeah you're the guinea pigs we're the guinea pigs i'm supplying hive tools so if you have your hive tool use a yellow one a wet yellow one then we don't have to bother with cleaning stuff, etc. And there's one more if you use that up. Yeah, that one's only ever been here. I know you don't have any bees, so you're okay with that one. <laughs> so this, this stuff, I'll just mention, we're not going to be using this uh, for making our nukes um, with our cells. But this is just a the reason I, I would use this today is as a pheromone mask and that's used in the case where I'm going to take my queenless hive after I've moved my, not my, my cells out I may still have resources in there I may want to still use the momentum of that hive and so I'm going to take my old queen that's in one of these nukes it doesn't matter if it's the same queen that was here before um, move her back that would probably be okay but as you probably know bees are all about smell and they're all about the Queen's pheromone every Queen has her own distinct scent and the bees know that and if they have another Queen in there they'll tell that she doesn't belong and they'll kill her these hives are queenless so there should be no Queen pheromone per se QMP, Queen Mandibular Pheromone, comes off her mouth. And so that because there's no queen pheromone in here, they should readily accept a laying queen. Um, I don't know if, John, can you say anything about that? What's the, the chance on the should part of that? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but there's always that... Uh, there's never the, oh, it won't be a problem at all. Yeah. No one will ever tell you that, or should ever tell you that, because um, last year I had uh, two colonies that would not accept queens. We're queenless, completely queenless. There's no eggs, there's no nothing, and they would not accept new queens. And there's no reason why it should have happened, and it was a very hard fix, but sometimes uh, they do not follow your plan. Yeah. And, and they don't follow the rules a lot of times. So there, so there's always that should. We're always full of shoulds. Michael Palmer did a video where he supported the yes, it will work side. And what he said was, if you take a queen, he said a queenless hive will accept a laying queen. And he made the distinction. He said, if you take a queen in a cage, that's not a laying queen. That's a mated queen, but it's not a laying queen. You take that queen in the cage, you drop it in a queenless hive, there's a big mite there it might not work uh, he said but if you take a laying queen laying from here put her in that queenless hive his wisdom says they will take to her right away because she's a laying queen I guess they can see the difference I don't really want to take that chance because I can do a little something to help that uh, increase those those chances on my favor and it's easy and it's not very expensive and that's this stuff right here Honeybee healthy is, is kind of the, the word that people call it. This is the Man Lake version Pro Health. It's just an essential oil product. has an emulsifier to kind of keep it mixed, more or less. We mix it in sugar syrup in a sprayer. We make it uh, fairly strong. There's, there's different mix ratios on the back there. We make it fairly strong because we're not really using very much. We're, we're simply going to mist. We'll take a frame and just like that once on one side turn it around like that on the other side um, just to kind of give them a 
it's kind of stinky well it smells good but it's strong uh, just to interrupt that pheromone smell uh, so that's only if we're going to be moving a mated queen back into a hive uh, we're just going to give it that little bit of insurance and again a lot of this stuff I've been told and I uh, you know I've always already told you I'm new at this I'm standing here in front of the entrance yeah. for your benefit so if I get stung it's not my <laughs> fault <laughs> that's right Stand here with shorts right in front of the entrance. Right, right at the right level. Yeah. It's like those hazard vids where everybody's in hazmat suit except the one guy going, what are you doing? Yeah. That's me. So we're queenless. Listen to that. And that's something I was actually going to go through before we do anything. Because that's a skill that will serve you well. I put an N for notch on the hives that we've done and so that means those hives are queenless I'd like everybody to take a minute and we're gonna have to be really quiet while we do this but just come and listen to the queen right hive and then listen at the queenless hive and you should be able to tell the difference and you should lock onto that sound because you'll get in your apiary that you can just walk along within 10 15 feet of a hive and you'll stop and you'll say that one has no queen and it's that distinct and I know it's that distinct and I'll tell you a little story about why because I was super new I had only a few hives I hadn't even been beekeeping for a year but I'd been beekeeping long enough that I'd heard that we did our course at U of M and the field day we were out in the apiary looking at different scenarios in different hives and Dr. Curry had us going from this place to that place to look at a hive. We walked past a hive. And as we walked along, I was this far from that hive. I said to my buddy, buddy I said, that hive has no queen. Didn't think anything else of it. We did our work over here. We came back and Dr. Curry said, now I want you to look at this hive, it has no queen. And I thought, that's really cool. I didn't know that I had locked onto that sound like that. But that impressed upon me that, okay, that's a good tool to have in your toolbox. Listen to that sound. So does everybody kind of want to do that? And again, we have to be really quiet. I'll stop talking. Find a, find a notched hive. Listen to the normal one first. It's always best to, to lock in on what's normal. Then you'll realize what's not. Yeah, this one's normal. This one, these, both of these are normal. Well, listen this here. one's not. Can you I'm hear sure that? I can hear the difference. I've done that at home. I, I think this sounds like water. I don't know why. Yeah. I'll tell you that. It does. It's actually pretty cool because you can listen left and right. <laughs> Why not? So you hear that, eh? <laughs> Just make sure they're not going to smell us coming. <coughs> okay, so we see a couple weight marks here. That's where our cells are. So we're going to make two nukes out of this. What do we need to do first? At least take our lid off. So these two I've made. See it says queen cell, May 25. So uh, we'll start over here. So open those suckers up. A little bit of water. Well, no, don't worry. There's not that much. There's not that much. It's okay. Yeah, so 
of course normal normal management we're gonna free up some space here come on get out of there I left my gloves out and so they're wet very slippery Now what do you see here? What's this? What are these? Does anybody know? That's right. And what do we know about Apovar? And what do we know about how we should use it? We need to leave it in for 40 days, 42 40 or something like that. We're not quite there, so how should we handle that? I would agree with that. One strip per every five frames of bees. So we might have a few too many bees here for one strip, but you know, I've got a few uh, extras in the camper there we could use. What are we going to do with this hive once we've taken the cells out? Any, anybody have any ideas what we should do? And th this is where your options come out, so there's no wrong answers. I thought you were going to put a queen back in. You want to put a queen back in there? That's what I thought. That was the plan. All right. Yeah. Like you see your cell there? Yeah. Yeah. There's still one open. Yeah. It's not a, not a very big cell, though, is it? No. I'm not too impressed with that. No, it's still open. One is still open. It's a cup, but there's there nothing, nothing in it. No. Nothing in that. So, I'll put that in your nuke. Oh, there's a cell right here. Ah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. I think I tried that one on each side. Just leave that as is and go put that in your nuke. So, we've got not a bad frame of bees there, but that's probably not enough. We'll likely want to do another shake or two. Because it's going to be a while before she's laying and a while before bees are emerging. So they've got a bit of a road ahead of them. And we want to make sure they have the bees that they need one to raise young ones. There's one there. Did they put one on or the bottom? They, they, see, they're making their own because they're queenless and they're, they're a fairly strong hive. So that, I mean, that one. Was that one stuck to the bottom? Yeah, it was stuck to the, the floor. And I tore oh, it open. open. Yeah. So there's some drones here. They've got larvae in this cup and this Looks here. Like there's a cup there. But that's... Covered in. Yeah. They're not going to, you know, emerge before okay. cells here. So let's go with that for the other nuke. Anyone? Yep. Anyone? <coughs> Thanks, buddy. No problem. So, looks like we should have another sh shake or two in those, doesn't it? What have we got left here? So we're saying, okay, let's move the old queen back. But what have we got left here? There's no brood there. So Brad, yes, th sir. There could be other queen cells that they've made on the road. Yes, sir. Queen. Yes, so sir. Yeah, well? you should. Because yeah. if you put that old queen back in here, guess what happens when that virgin That's appears? Right. So this has no, no brood, and normally, I was kind of taking the short cut here when you're here. Normally I keep my frames pretty clean on the bottom. I'm doing that in the hive just so you don't get all covered in bees. Right, so they're going to be not as quick to build cells down there. So the comb you scrape off, do you, where do you, what do you normally do with it? I usually scrape it off the ground, but then you get it on your shoes. Okay. <laughs> so. And, and again, I would scrape that off if I were here myself, but I just don't want to get too many bees cranked off with everybody here. So Steve is act absolutely correct. As we look for what we've got left, I have seen no additional brood. So what is our value here in this hive? To me, that kind of determines what we do. What's our value in this hive? Use these ones to uh, increase the strength of a weaker hive. Yeah. 
the bees you mean yeah 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 the bees are always good value because to raise young you not only need a queen to lay you need food to feed them but you also need bees to feed them and keep them warm the queen will only lay as much as the bees will allow her to lay for them to take care of so you can put probably some of these frames into uh, the splits or at least shake or, yeah now what's going to happen to our foragers here if we take this hive down take this apart distribute the resources are we going to have foragers coming back here i would say yes so what if you place uh, uh, one of your splits in this location so at least the forage bees can come back yeah 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 that's it excellent and make you certainly it, can you certainly can so um, Jay's over there making nukes uh, one frame of feet <laughs> one frame that has pollen on it and then drawn comb on either side is what I did yep that'll make a good nuke and then she just needs some shades of bees and we have no queens there's no queens in there there's cells there's no queens in the in the original hive here so we're not worried about the queens we're not worried about them meeting we're not worried about shaking them or finding them just go to town so start bringing frames over shake them in the box how many do you want all of them <laughs> we might as well take that whole box because all that's in it is bees okay <coughs> so you didn't pinch off any queens so. no there weren't there weren't a lot that one frame kind of had three, but one of them looked really small. Okay, because one of them is dropping in a different hive here. Because there's at least yeah, one the some. Open and there's there's some. There's there's if there's a difference in age, generally the first one will tear the other one down. Yeah. So there won't actually be much of a battle. So it's kind of, you, you know. Are them all in one box or are you splitting them up between two boxes? I'll split them up in two boxes. So I'm going to start with three on one. I'll put the box over. Anybody else want to shake bees? Have to have at it. There you go, Steve. Shake some bees. Jay's gonna get all tired running, running around. I know. What's that? Are you not leaving any bees in this? No, we're gonna take it all, all out for that one. So wouldn't that destroy the hive? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they'll be gone. So when they shake, they should not jar the queen. The new queen. Yeah, don't bang that frame around. Yeah. They'll come back here, but they'll either find the other hive or they'll yeah. collect here and I'll check it later we'll we'll do something with them are you going to give them another no okay there's nothing in here there's no brood in here oh, oh I see. so there's nothing the only thing we have here is bees yeah. so we said we'll use the bees there so the rest that are stuck here what are they going to do yeah. well take care of them later <laughs> and you can do this again they'll co they'll collect here come back yeah you press three, five, walk out. Excuse me. Okay, there you go, buddy. One done. Okay. So, all we've got here, we don't have bees here, we don't have brood here, we've got no cells, nothing. Uh, these p bees are all confused because we've taken their home away. But what are, you, they what are you gonna do with these now? Because yeah, yeah, bees, yeah go put those in. Just yeah. watch where the cells are, eh? Yeah, the yeah. cells are in the middle. I'm gonna yeah. try to. So, so again, what are we going to do here? We can, we can leave this as is. The bees may come back, you know, find that hive. Some of them, they'll come in here and hang out. I can shake them later again. It's just one of those things. I just tip up my super on its side and stand it somewhere. Yeah. So the bees get out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good good option. I could stand that up and. Go away. So I'll just leave that there for now. They'll kind of do their own thing. And some of the other colonies, if we pull ourselves and then we have a bunch of brood left, then we can do something else. We can boost other hives, we can leave a cell in there to mate. You know, different options at this point. It's whatever kind of, whatever work fits you best, whatever fits your goals best. Well, would you not be able to take another uh, 
frame that has queen cells and turn that into a sure but there's nothing in here but bees yeah there's nothing in here but a few foragers yeah there's no nurse bees left we've taken okay. them so that wouldn't be like the, the foragers will come back and take care of brood there's no question about that they're not as good at it Brad's keeping them in their things and uh, so there's really not a lot left here fill all up and stuff and then you'll move them back into the temple. Oh, we just you got three and Richard. You got three hives out of one. So, I was going to put some there. So right, I've, I've increased by two, assuming 100% mating, which is not. So, the queen that happen. we took out of here, you don't want to put her back in at all? Not at this point. You're going to let her. One of these boxes. You're going to let her. Yeah, she's one of those. She's ones. one of these. So. So I, I want I want her to build that box and then, we'll just and then when I see that I don't even know where she is and I'm not keeping track no uh, some of these are salvage they were weak colonies that I stole some yeah. brood for yeah okay. and I probably stole brood out of here is why there wasn't very much um, so once they start filling these boxes then I'll bring them back to these full size well, boxes. for me like I mine are obviously still really good for producing ones yeah. I'm gonna put my queens back in I'm gonna yeah. let them bump up and yeah and then, yeah. then I'm gonna do it again give it a good spray of that stuff and and you should be good yeah okay oh look at you girls See, these are not that strong. They're salvage ones that I brought. Look, I've got, I've got two strips in here. Mm -hmm. This is a salvage. This is a really weak hive I put brood and bees in. Our OTS queens. So a different job, but same job. I think the same is here. Hey, Brad, leave it open. I don't even have a strip. Yeah, leave it open. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn you loose. So everything has an N on it that uh, has has a notch and so every frame should be as Steve pointed out though check the frames make sure there's not more cells um, you know if you want to leave cells in that hive that's fine but you want to make sure you know what you're leaving we, we worked on I love watching yeah we did the far row we did the far row I think which Over here? Oh no, yeah, we around though. Which one did we need? Yeah, they might have done it. It's better than them just over here somewhere. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like maybe they didn't move around. Yeah, they look like they've been moved around. No, I haven't been moved around. If you think it was this one, check. Oh, maybe it was this one right here. This one? Last year I got a squirrel man in hand. I knocked it down and I had to go to work, so I just put the lid in by the left hand. So? And they were like, All good? Like, yeah. Like, oh, you want to dive in? Sure. In. Grab them. Can I borrow that? There you go. Okay, she started to make swarm cells. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think any hives that good. <laughs> Looked in there and thought, wow, this actually looks pretty good, eh? Yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah. You, know, you got some space here you could use. That one. So, what I usually do is I'll start pushing everything. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they're just glued in there too much. Brad's keeping it. Nice squash to be there. And then, if this is fairly clean, yeah. then you can go for the first frame. This is this is super easy. You need some smoke. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always checking the it's not only for your safety, but it's, it makes it easier to work when they're not all in your face like that. What, 21 days? Two weeks? Huh? 21 days? Don't check them for what? Two weeks at least. Two weeks at least, right? Yeah. Can I borrow the smoker quickly? Yeah, we should I have maybe. mine right there. Should I light it up? Can you? Yeah. Do you want to grab the smoker out of the... It's on the, the dinette there on the chair. Do you want to light that up? Sure. Yeah. Light it. Sure. Sure, Brad. <laughs> uh, my fuel is not the greatest, so good luck. We got no cells on this one. Okay. We'll just set that down here. Yeah. There's anywhere you're not going to run into it. 
it, it helps. It's not foolproof. Like, I mean, so we want to get right to those notch ones first then? I would keep doing what you're doing. Just keep you going one at a time out. because you're you're wanting to hunt down cells as well. But these aren't the strongest colonies and their defense uh, mechanisms are a little bit dampened and they're, they're queenless, right? So they're not at, at their peak. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Example, and then from this you can just put them back in because okay. you've got a little space now, and they're they're safe in there. So what would you do with the options as to what to do with that mother hive? And again, it all depends on what a guy's goals are, right? Uh, it depends on the colony strength. I yeah. mean, with the mother hive, like where we're, when you, the one where we put the old queen into, or the one... Well, this one, for example, we've got no brood left. There's not really anything left there, but some foragers who don't know where to live. I think in your situation, if you've got some really critical ones, it would be best to boost and save. Start shaking. Yeah. You know, save or even transplant depending on how much resources are in there. Yeah. But you're not really sure sort short of resource frames either, right? No, no, no. So I mean, way more than I need. Not are notched, but we've got a couple uh, cells developing. So they're developing Start. here. So where's your notch uh, uh, cell? We are still okay. the next one yet. Well, um, there's another one there tip in that the up already. again. See, that's a cup. Is there yeah. anything yeah. in it? There's nothing in it. Okay. So you have to always determine cup or cell. So okay. tip that up. This one is definitely a cell, I know. Yeah. This one is a cup. Okay, so they'll repair that. Uh, so that's a that's a decent frame. You could probably make um, a, a nuke out of that in a while. So what we'll do is in the end we'll leave that in here okay. with enough bees and whatnot. They'll keep feeding those. Okay. So, so we'll that we'll mark in. that as a as a cell but we'll leave it in there. What's he burning? Anything on the other side? Sometimes they hide stuff on you. Yeah. You don't want to shake a queen. So I have a bee brush there we could be using too. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, it looks good. So put that back in, I'll mark it. And then we'll we'll revisit that or I'll revisit that later. I'll just mark that in the middle since I don't know really where that cell is. Okay. It's almost if you took the mother hive and you did three notches instead of two. Yeah. You could take the two frames, there you go. make them into two nukes, and if you leave one. Enough, have the remnant that you could just walk away. Right? And my only is either there's a lot of them come back, eh? Yeah. And, yeah. and well, my, you've, it's, 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 my concern <laughs> with with that method, which I think that's what most of the guys okay. do, where are you putting them? Is if she doesn't mate, and I've left a lot of resources there for her. Um, that's all dwindled in the meantime. Yeah. This one, we got that one in that the That looks like a nice really one, eh? Nice. Yeah, that's a nice one. So and what do we got in here? We've got cups with nothing. Nothing, right? And that's fine. That's, yeah, that's sweet. So, so is that notch. where we notched it? That, yeah, yeah. That's, the notch that's a one, good yeah. cell yeah. right yeah. there. So this one we want to use as a That's exactly. Right. Right. Is yeah. there anything on the other side? No, I didn't see okay. anything on that side. Yeah. Okay, well, gingerly slide that in. Got a couple of nukes open there. I'm going to give that nuke this frame. So, which cell, which side was the cell on? Do you remember? Uh, this is this is from that hive. I'm just going to put that right here. So now she's protected, and then all your other frames are here. Yeah. These are good ones because these all have some pollen in them. Doesn't matter that there's like a little bit of mold is okay. Yeah. 
Okay, now I mean, don't let it get too nasty. Oh, is, I know. That's oh, kind of the. This has got nasty pollen on yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's kind of the max. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's beautiful. Holy cow! Big smoke going over there. We have the fire department over here now. <laughs> Still a burning ban. I could go to jail for this. Right. So we got a really nice cell here. Nice. And then we've got an open, open one there. there. Yeah. And so we only got the one cell there? Yeah. yeah. And nothing on this side, right? No. But that open cell has potential. It does. I'm thinking put that in the new, like that, and we'll just make sure there's enough bees in there, eh? They have lots of pollen here, right? Yeah. So that all they have to, all we're really concerned with is them finishing feeding here. They're open, but there's a really fat larva yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, you can see that but because something this one's white capped, in right? This yep. one will hatch first. She'll have first, yeah. Yeah. So if you were but in dire need, you could try to cut it out. So you could get, get that off of here. But what could happen, like what John said, is likely what's going to happen. This one will emerge. Kill she'll her. kill this one. She'll tear this one down and kill her. However, maybe this one died. Yeah. So you're. And maybe she's not going to emerge. So and therefore, back. that's our backup. Okay. So like the air and a spare. Air and a spare. Okay. So I think we put that in the nuke. We just make sure we have plenty of bees, which I think we're well on our way with that. Okay. And uh, so there you go. Make another new nuke with that one. I think I'm about, got about a 30% success rate for transplanting. Um, cutting cells? Cutting cells. Yeah. It works just, for us every it, time. Do you think maybe... Uh, much. Uh, too much uh, movement or uh, too much movement or sometimes it's just on how much you're you know you're trying to not take too much and I think you should like scoop it you cutting that off plastic um, yeah cutting it off. that's the problem with this is the back of the cell is oh, kind there's of there's two on this one but yeah. see, they're not closed yet that should be fine too. Than both of them um, the th do we have anything yeah so oh yeah they won't draw that out if they're empty it's the cups that you need to see there's another one right here and right here that's a really nice one so now what do we need to do we need to be ruthless that's the best one what's the next best one these are behind the other side yeah like these ones are still open right uh, this one actually looks pretty good. Destroy the other two. But can I take one this for the new? Yes, go ahead. And then usually that by the next day I gotta clean. So, what do you think? In the case, so we get rid of probably the one closest to you. We get rid of this one. I don't know. It seems yeah. to. This is what I was taught. And I guess possibly that one. I don't know. Turn it, turn it back over. Smaller one there. This one is not very big, but no, it's cat. It's let's, closed, right? Let's do this. That's that. If you want to taste royal jelly, now's the time. <laughs> well, okay, so we got that one, and now we. I'm going to choose this one. So we'll get rid of this one. That one. How's it going, Steve? So I don't think we're going to get out of this one. Yep. What's that? We weren't successful. Did they fix them? Oh. So we need another. We need some. Uh, we need some Brad time. <laughs> we need you to come. You're right there. Yeah. Okay, so how often do you leave bees in here? Because a lot of times there's no brood and then everything else, right? So most of the time you're ending up dismantling this guy. And Don't forget, I'm kind of new at this too. <laughs> yeah, he's so. got a cell on here that we want to keep continue to feed. Yeah. So what he's going to do is put this back together. Uh, after you check these frames okay. to make sure we maybe don't have enough cells and you can leave two cells in here if you want uh, we're gonna need a couple shakes of bees over here but you're gonna have all the foragers so you're you're well set that way um, so frames like this once you're done checking them go shake them in the new nukes and then put them back in here we'll outfit this with 10 frames and then okay. we can so mark we'll make sure we mark that as such yeah yeah, as you as you inspect, go and shake. I'm, I'm getting rid of any additional queen cells that there happen to be, eh? So this was a notch. What's on the other side of here? Oh, okay. So, but they but said they pulled out. Show me, show me, show me, show me. Come here. Yeah, so Now tip it up so I can look at it. Other way around. What do we got here? Another one. Tip, tip it farther toward me. Okay. I think that you would take a picture of some larvae or something. 
There's nothing in this cup. Okay. There's a larva in this cup. So you've got a larva going there. You have a cell here. Yeah. And I got a cell there, but they said you they have already cell pulled there. Out two frames out of there. Of cells? That's what they said. Okay. You can leave that in there. In your original to, box? To mate if you want. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah. leave this. It hasn't been shook in at all, so I'll just nope. leave this in there. Yeah. The Mark it. That's the same as that box. Well, and then you're just hanging by life. We'll mark that. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm not going to shake anymore because I want to leave enough here. Okay, what's going on? So, this one that looks like it was notched, we're not really 100% sure. Like, there's some cups on this side, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. Okay, nothing in. Let's get rid of them so that we can not be bothered with them again. Okay. So there's that, and then there's nothing really on this side. Nothing, eh? Let me right, look so at that. Okay. So we were kind of like, well, that's weird. Do you also want to scrape off the bottom? Yeah, normally I keep those clean so yeah. that there's not as much problem. Yeah. Well, if we notch this, then... Uh, yeah, then they must have repaired it wherever it was notched. What do we see here? It's all just drawn crump comb. Yeah. What's in these cells? More eggs? Mm -hmm. why, is, why is there eggs in those cells? Why is there, oh, eggs is there a queen? Because queen? there's a queen in here. Huh. How can that be? I just see a did you and I, when we did this, did we take the queens out? Yeah. Oh, well, there's a queen in here. Okay, well, I guess we're looking for the queen. <laughs> is our new yeah. objective. I thought I saw a queen. Like, a, well, So maybe that's what no. happened. So we were looking you, at this one that's not. You don't have to look for the queen. Okay. okay. You can just... See, the rule is in beekeeping. If you see the eggs. The rule is in beekeeping. You make your plans. You go to the apiary. Then you make new plans. <laughs> Got it. Right? See, look at this one. It has yeah, so this one, I thought like maybe it oh, was eggs. attached yeah. to something. And it like opened that? up when we pulled it out. But this, maybe. This one, that's a drone. Okay, that's just, just a drone. drone? Okay. Wow. There's a cell they're working on here. There's something well, that in that. would be why there's no queen cells being oh. pulled in here. Well, there's a cell well, here, Steve. Right here. Oh, so... The cell right there. Oh, but look at all the larvae. Yeah, there's eggs and stuff in this hive. Okay, well, so that's okay though. Yeah. It's not going to so hurt we're just us. It's going to be done and close it up. And we can. You can use this. You can put this in a nuke. Okay. And just make sure you have enough feed and resources for them and enough bees. Mm -hmm. Make sure because the they're going to have to keep feeding that. Okay. And you can make a nuke out of that frame. Okay. okay. So I got. I but yeah, make sure that if there was a there's sure. a queen in here, there's egg. Make sure the queen's not make on sure that. Make sure the queen's not on that one. Yeah. Do you want to brush them off? Yeah. Have a brush. Yeah. Do you have a brush, Steve? Yeah. Okay. So if you find the queen, then of course you know where she is. Yeah. I like to see those drones this time of year. Yeah, there's a lot of drone cells in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Well, that was an interesting lesson. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like I said, you make your plans, you go to the apiary, then you make new plans. That's the rule. Every beekeeper knows that, that uh, did situation. We, did we maybe possibly mistakenly mark this one? Well, there's even marks where it was no, I think it. Out. I think it was definitely notched. It's a drone cell in the middle. Just make note of those kind of things. That's not normal and it could mean something else. There's not a lot of them. Sometimes cells get misshapen and if the cell is too big, the queen will just lay a drone. Yeah. yeah, we notched this hive but there's eggs in it. So there's a queen in here. Something laying eggs. It's probably a queen. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to have laying workers. Yeah, definitely not laying workers. That looks different. The cell, and they'll be stuck to the wall. Ah, okay. Hmm. I'm not going to mess with the burr comb too much because there's drones in there, and I want those drones out. <laughs> no, it's a lifetime. 
layers upon layers of bees on this. I'm like, can you guys? Like, we're gonna well, are you gonna off? brush those off? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Not well. Just into, just into here. Okay, let's do that. Because there's this cell, though. We want to be really careful before you shake the cell. Don't shake right the cell. So we want to be very, very careful. I just I forget what I'm doing, and I shake cells way too often, and it drives me nuts. So this was the one we're leaving in here, or what? This one that I'm holding, okay. I believe, right? So this is like what? that one didn't really have much on it. It's got a mark, so it's got no cell. Yeah. Whether they repaired it or... Well, bees hate brushes. You want to make bees mad? <laughs> That's why I just hate using brush, but it's about the only way. We got our notches, but we got eggs too, so oh, yeah? cool. something went wrong. Huh. Something went wrong. Hopefully they're not balling the queen. Opened up a hive the other day and they jumped on the queen and killed her right in front of my eyes. Yeah. So I don't think there's any cells on that. So there's a cup. Uh, But there's nothing in it. No, oh, where are the eagle eyes? Where's the queen? Maybe like that, that frame still has a lot of bees on it. It's not a very nice frame, is it? It's not even. farther out here. She's not likely to be. No. Don't be on this one at all. Nectar. She's in a ball of bees like that, so you gotta kinda look. Well, I don't know, does it matter? Does it matter where the queen is? Um, because we can take those cells, put them in. Do you have a cell on that? Uh, uh, I don't remember where the there's got there's a, this one didn't have a cell. Yeah, so this one didn't have a cell, so you're going to have a cell there to separate the cell, wherever it is, from the bees. So get those bees off of there, take that frame to a nuke, and then you're going to have to shake I'm not standing here, you're going to get your smoker ready. Cause yep, we got it. So we took some out of that one, we left the, the one cell in. I shuck uh, two frames into one nuke. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've got two that we haven't shaken into over there and this one. Uh, do you want to leave this? So this has got a cell? This is the one that they mm -hmm. made their own cell in. Yeah. And we got, uh, we got a good little cluster of bees there. Yeah. So I, I only shook two into the first nuke on the, that pallet. And the other two we started having shaking anything because I well, we're, wasn't yeah. sure if you want to take too much from yeah. this one now that we're leaving there, You're right? exactly right we'll get a shake from somewhere else okay uh just remember and we're going to need outfit this now, now so we just want to you want to just fill another this? seven three with, three uh, three more frames yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
in the camper yeah. straight in there's a cardboard box with some garbage in it there's some apple bar strips right there they've already been used okay thanks man yeah we'll stick us we'll just stick one strip back in here I think my smoker went out <laughs> yeah that's nothing it's dry totally dry okay one of those has no strip either as well okay I think everybody's wearing gloves but you never want to touch these with your bare hands uh, we found a cell here yeah you remember what side that was on my smoker went out no that that's not my smoker that's the one that Jay did my smoker's good <laughs> my smoker's burning and yours is not uh, I want to put my strip right there so I'm going to find out where that cell is right there on the bottom there's one right there but I thought we had a nicer one didn't we? there was Yep, well, I'm going to look to see, look a drone, look a drone, yay, I'm going to put my strip right here, there's nothing here. Okay. So this one now we can close back up? We can close up, yep. And they're going to be strong because they've got all the foragers. And it sure is. That's three bucks a piece, that. So, we're going to say we got a queen cell on May 26 today? 26, right? Six. Better label that one that we played with. Yeah, we got one we left the queen in. We're not going to start shipping it to no. the no. These ones. So you just need shakes, yeah. right? And I think one needs one of these hands. Okay. Oh, goodness. Pardon me? Yeah, that pile. Yeah. That one has a strip. Okay. That's the one I shook into. So that's good. You just need a. Uh, this you one just I want to shake, shake there. Indicate that, and then we'll just shake something in there. Okay. And Sorry. This one we didn't shake either. Doesn't have a. And doesn't have a strip either. Okay. I'll drop the strip right. No. Uh, crap! I don't know where the cell is. So I don't know where to drop the strip. The cell is over here. Over there? So, so I can drop it anywhere. So drop it there. Yeah, these, that's right, I did. Uh, hmm. And that needs a little bit of everything. And that needs a shake. And that needs a shake. Steve, run uh, over there, grab another shaker box. Or sorry, Steve. <laughs> You're not Steve. Um, yeah. So this is the one where we thought the problem had the cell on it. Brushed all the bees off, so there's no bees in here. Okay, so we're gonna need a few shakes. So I got a pollen and a feed. Where's your cell? Is your cell in the middle there where the next yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll yeah, we'll put this maybe. over here then. Yep. Okay. So put this up here, and then you know you need to shake into it. Yeah. Now you want some oh. empty? We need some empty. Yeah, fill that up. Oh, I have two empties. Yeah. Thanks. What do you shake in after you have all the frames in? Pardon me? You shake in after you have put all the bottom frames in? Yeah, well these little boxes, it's it's hard to shake. Like a full size box, you can take two or three frames out, shake okay. These little guys take two or three frames out, there's nothing left in there anyway. So it's, it's easy, this is easy. Yeah, because I usually pull frames out and then... Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. 
I'm not claiming anything I do is even close to having. Well, that's the beauty of about beekeeping is, is you do what works for you, right? Whatever you like to do. It works. That's what I do. And you do what works for you, and then you see somebody else, and you think, "Well, that's a good idea." <laughs> now we can't shake bees from ours because there's, there's a queen in there. Yeah. You so can't if you find the queen. Somewhere else. Yeah. So you need to go to another OTS notched hive that you know has no queen. Hopefully it's a strong one and you can start shaking bees. Hmm. This one would Look like it a few bees survive, but it really needs another shake. Okay. That one definitely, there's nothing in there at all. Okay, so what are... Um, what is it that you're wanting done with the one with the... We brought the frame over to the... That one frame over. Yeah. Uh, what's to be done with... Oh, there's a queen in there, right? Yeah, so just so it just put it back together. So this one, are we just going to put, put it in frame. like a frame and then close it up? Or? Yes, ma yes ma'am. Okay. Go. She's in there. Jay. Everybody got a hive tool. Yeah. Here. Oh, well, it's not the kind you like, but it might work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Usually two nights, and they're good. This is what you should have done. Yeah. Wow, that's better than nothing. I tried. I tried. Yeah, give me a. Give me a second here. Yeah. You will probably after this. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Are you talking about the funny they're all sitting here looking at you? Yeah. Are you making a plan? Yeah. Okay. Drone cell. Yeah. The drone cell uh, frame. Yeah. What do you put that in? Just these two? No. And on the that one third one. This one? Yeah, we got, we Can I shake in here? Or you yeah, go ahead. Those frames are usually. I mean, not right now. Yeah, Jay, Jay previously freaked me out, so. I mean, I just not use them right now because I want. Yeah, I'm not doing my management part in there. I'll explain. In a second. Wait until they're a little stronger because I want to get as many brood as I can. I need as many bees as I can right now. Yeah. You guys aren't getting out. <laughs> Good now? You had enough? Uh, yeah. So yeah no, I'll give it, give it as much as it can. I'll answer this one. So it's good we're doing this because it brings up another point. It's actually something I kind of wrote on that uh, material I gave you. It has to do with, I'll go over here and talk. It has to do with the uh, people are always asking, to go in there. Yeah. you know, to have to move two miles away and all that kind of stuff. And uh, nurse. Uh, nurse. you should be, you should be shaking at least one more. Is there a Just got to let them settle down oh, a bit. Down. Okay. Somebody, okay. Should we need, we need to find someone in their colony? Well, you got to have a queenless colony though. Oh. <laughs> so again, we'll start again on that. So people say, when well, you make a split, you have to move no, two miles away. Sure. That doesn't work for a lot of hobbyists. Um, you know, commercial guy, he's got yards everywhere, so it doesn't matter. And he's all set up for moving bees on trucks and trailers and stuff. So that's all fine, but it's the whole idea of the foragers coming back to where they were. They geolocate. If you pick up a hive and you move it 100 feet, especially on a nice day, you come back in half an hour, it's going to be a pile of bees on the ground because they know where in space home should be. 
they didn't find home but they don't know where to go so they just stay there so you can set a you can set a collector hive there put some comb in it bees are attracted to comb even if there's nothing in it and you can sort of funnel them back to where they should be and work at that people talk about moving a hive putting branches in front I've never tried that uh, it's just the idea to get rid of this memory as to where they are and here we're trying to outfit these two nukes with bees we know are foragers because they're, they're going back to that hive over there and so what we're doing is we screen that we'll shake the foragers in we'll screen it lock them in there for two nights and that should be enough for them to forget where they are so they and then they'll re they'll rehome back on this hive so that's good we, it's a good use for those foragers that keep going back there in here you know it's not going to hurt them at all it's pretty warm though um, last year I did this and what I did was I'm not going to do it because we have queen cells on this pallet but if I didn't have queen cells if I was just making splits with uh, you know mated queens or whatever and you know put the queen in there with the cage and, and all that kind of stuff shake all my bees in I'll pick this up with my tractor and I'll move it over there to my my old garage because it's cool in there and it's dark and I'll set them in there for two days they, they stay cool enough they're perfectly happy in there then I can just pick them up move them back out here and they're gonna stay with this hive so that's all we're trying to accomplish here is, is just run out that reset that memory yeah so we're not having any success here because the lids open no no lid is not very loose so it's hard to you need a lot more keep them coming yeah. we'll just open the lid when you get here with them. Oh. yeah so that they don't fly away right away these lids are pretty tight as well and you can use something else for a lid if, so it doesn't if that doesn't happen Yeah, but it was really? in a pine tree. He's like, well, how do I take it on the pine tree? I can't believe I'll take it on the ground. Hi, Tool. People ask you, what's the most important thing, tool you have as a beekeeper? He would fly, picked up all the equipment, I told him I'd go There's a lot of important tools, but I think the most important tool is a hive tool. And if you don't have a hive tool, use a screwdriver and it becomes a hive tool. <laughs> because if you go to an apiary without a hive tool, one, You're a spectator. Was, and all of a sudden it was like right. a hyper effect. It just started oh, yeah, 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 I was just trying like, to be a spectator last time because I was like, I get hive too happy, then I just want to. Dig, 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 dig. I was just going to ask you about because we lost our bees. I don't know if you remember the story, but we had a bear attack. So we moved them onto a little deck, yeah. and then we built a, a cajun area for the ba for the honey. So we moved them over yeah. there, yeah. and we lost them. Yeah. So now Rochelle and I, we found our took our honey, and we're like, hey, we're gonna harvest our honey. So we left our old one there with like the dead bees and the the comb and whatnot in our bare safe area, and then with the honey, we moved it to the deck, so she could take it, but then she forgot it at my house. And then this week now, there's all bees on the one that are where the hives to be. The, the bees are where the hives where the we hive don't was. Don't want the hive to be on the deck <laughs> with the honey. Eating. Oh, so they've found the honey. Yeah. They're just robbing it. Oh, that always the problem. Take it away from them. And then oh yeah, they're so not. They're not located on, the deck, on that. And if I can put the thing. Okay. They're not located on that. They're just robbing. Okay. So they came from somewhere else. So yeah, all you have to do is <laughs> get them off, put that box so that it's sealed top and bottom, okay. so they can't get in there. They might still be attracted to it, but they won't steal it on you. You ever see frames that they rob? It's, it's insane. They just rip it. They just, yeah, they don't it's, care. it's torn. It's nice and neat about it. They just rip it to shreds. You'll see pieces of wax all over the place because they just shred it. To you want to shake in there? 
Okay. We'll need more in there. Okay. The one we I need more. Beam. Can I take, take from in there queenless? Yeah. yeah, if you can find a queenless. Yeah. Have another well, queenless. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I decided that one's pretty strong. So that's what I was thinking. I don't, I don't think we have much of a choice. Okay, we'll lift the lids when you. But this, uh, there's a couple pallets right here. They're the same as my my hive pallets, mm -hmm. but you can see there's a piece of wood over the entrance. Okay. That's what I call a honey skid, oh. and I just screwed that down. And so when I do my honey harvest, then I'll put my honey box on that and put a lid on it. You're always going to get a couple of bees, but they can't get in the bottom. Not gonna right, so then I can load that on the truck and bring it home. Show the bees might have got all your wedding honey. <laughs> the bees want to steal the honey for sure. We'll go check it out. Yeah, you're gonna come by after. Make sure that Do you have any that hives in your place? Like, where would those bees be coming? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of neighbors with hives. Let's put that one. Not that, not that, that, not that one, but this one beside it. it. Yeah. Okay. Zero bees. We shuck a whole bunch into it. You want to shake that here? Go ahead, shake it in. You only did two shakes okay, in there. Okay, you want to move yeah. over? Okay. Shake that here. And then you want to... We need a little bit more. Okay, we'll start this one again. Okay. Lid, Rochelle. Or, uh, Jackie. Oh. Lid. He wants me to put this one on this one to yeah. shake more into there. Okay. Let's go through another one here. I think we can take this one off. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Let me do this before you do that. Lid. Yeah, push that lid. Uh, okay. Right there. Uh, this lid right here. Okay. Oh. Yeah, there's yeah, almost nobody in there. Yeah. You know, one of the guys that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the guy that I don't know. Okay, you're what happened? He's trying to get all nervous. There's only one out of the bar. Yeah, I'm going to put the lid on that side. And then a friend of mine also owns uh, uh, 100 no, acres of sand. Okay, yeah. so that instead of turning north, did you just seal all, all of the new boxes with this so they can't get out? No, only these because we're shaking those foragers in here. Those have enough nurse bees, but these have foragers, so we're gonna. It's a good use for that hive we took apart, eh? Because there's not enough nurse bees in them, so we're so putting forages in them and filling yeah. them up. Is yeah. that what we're doing? It's a best case scenario, but it'll be okay. Food. Yeah, yeah. it'll be okay. Ready? Yeah. Alright, you're right. Yeah, there's not many in here, right? Eh? Oh. No, you're going to need a few more shakes. Do that here. Put that one in here, Jack. Yeah, it's an art. Let me show you something. Sometimes you can do this. Just hit your hand. Oh, it is an art. You know, and you just jar it enough they come off. It's like the right kind of shape. It's like the right kind of shape. Oh, yeah. kind of yeah. These are all the foragers from that open one still. Yeah. So. Thanks a lot, Brad. Not getting enough ground here. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't know. Or both sticky gloves, but yeah, anyway. That's okay. We're beekeepers. <laughs> Here's your tool. I don't know where you want. Yeah, I just throw it there. Thanks. Thank you very much. I only got stung once today. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we'll Humid. I live in the frame. Yeah. Do we have enough now? It's brutal. Yeah, you could use some more if you if you can spare them. What is this one uh, a candidate? That was a pretty strong hive. Okay. Yeah, this is the high risk. Just hurting for resources here. Okay. Brutal. Not, not enough brood, not enough bees. That's how my spring has been. 
I don't think I got any more, buddy. I think the weather, it's nice that the weather's turned. You're getting warmer evening. Yeah. That should help a lot. Help, help uh, get her laying so that they're not yeah, they're working so hard to keep them warm, yeah. I can probably shake some more off of here once they settle in. Come tonight when it's cooler. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just foragers, so there's nothing there. I'll come back later when it's cool. They'll they'll stay in one of these nukes then. I just screened these because we're shaking these foragers in. Oh, Jason, 